Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf, weekly download episode number 102, but most importantly, the new ZTT Studio. As you guys know, I spent the last week to week and a half moving into this new house and thus my new ZTT Studio, and I have this entire basement to myself and it's absolutely amazing. I will be doing a full studio tour for you guys here soon, but first, I have a lot of work left, so make sure you're subscribed for that. But on today's video, I'm gonna be playing some Diablo 3 when I give you this news. I got my cup of coffee right there. Make sure you guys let me know in the comments section what you're sipping on. Let's get into it. To start off the tech news this week, we got yet another rumor that Intel's 9th generation CPU lineup will be revealed here very soon on August 1st. We also learned that these new processors could finally be featuring soldered integrated heat spreaders, which would be huge and amazing if true. The leaks come from PC Builders Club, so take that how you want it, but I've already reported about this 9th generation now for three weeks. We all know that the 9900K will be a monster 8-core consumer grade CPU, and hopefully we can stop talking about the rumors and start talking about facts here on August 1st. Next up, Western Digital announced that they are shutting down one of three mechanical hard drive factories, which is pretty interesting if you're trying to stay up to date on the future of PC tech. We all know that SSDs are becoming cheaper and cheaper, and it's pretty cool to see some major brands like WD transition their focus from mechanical drives to SSDs. A rep from WD said, quote, the data technology industry is undergoing substantial change. The market transformation is driving increased adoption of SSDs and NAND flash introduced additional HDD applications. Pretty cool stuff, hopefully we see bigger and cheaper SSDs here soon. Moving on, NZXT announced that they are launching a new power supply unit here soon with the help of major PSU brand Seasonic. NZXT hasn't launched a new PSU for a few years now, they're not really known for them, but this time they are launching an ePSU which has some pretty interesting monitoring tools that'll work through your CAM utility software. Through the software you'll be able to monitor things like PSU temps, total power on hours, and also multi-rail overcurrent protection. These EPSUs are pretty expensive, however, as the 500 watt version starts at $125, but I'm definitely rooting for these because adding features like this to a boring part like a PSU is way better than just adding RGB like some other companies are doing. And to wrap up the tech news for the week, major companies in the VR space such as Nvidia, Oculus, Valve, AMD, and Microsoft have all finally agreed on something. VR cabling needs to be standardized to be USB type C. This all happened through virtuallink.org, which is where you can go to get all the details, but basically the only change that us normal users will see is hopefully these companies start designing VR headsets and accessories using USB Type-C, which is a good thing. One thing to note is that Sony is not a part of this agreement and neither is Intel. To start off the PC gaming news for the week, I thought it was pretty significant that Blizzard changed their World of Warcraft upfront charging system. Instead of having new players buy a battle chest which contains all previous expansions and their $15 a month subscription, Blizzard is ditching the battle chest idea and your subscription service will get you every expansion. This is actually pretty cool so that new players can jump right in and get all of the content for just $15 a month. Their latest expansion though, Battle of Azeroth, which launches on August 14th, will still need to be paid for though. Next up, the No Man's Sky Next update trailer was revealed earlier this week that showed off some pretty cool features for this game. As you may know, No Man's Sky was one of the worst launches in PC gaming history, but it has since bounced back and has actually developed into a pretty solid game. The next update is finally bringing multiplayer support, unlimited base building, and much improved graphics. I know I've said this before, but I'm personally thinking about picking this up again, I refunded it last time, and giving it a shot. I think it looks like it's finally worth it. Ubisoft has added a very controversial feature into their super popular Rainbow Six Siege game, an automatic banning bot for people that type inappropriate content into the text chats. Gamers are going crazy this week about getting automatically banned from Ubisoft. Now, it's not like it's a perma ban or anything, your first ban results in just 27 minutes of you not being able to play the game, and then the second warning is 2 hours, which doesn't seem that bad. I personally think that this is a step in the right direction. It's obviously not a perfect system, but it's a start. I definitely want to hear your opinions on the comment section about this though. Moving on, The Culling 2 had a terrible launch recently, replacing the original The Culling game, and it's about as rough as a start as possible. According to the Steam charts, The Culling 2's all-time high player count was 249, but as of right now, only a single digit 
decent amount of players are playing the game. This clearly wasn't a game that people wanted, so the developers stated that all their efforts are going back into the Calling Day 1, which is a reboot version of the original game. And finally, to wrap up the PC gaming news for the week, Funko Pop, the creators of those tiny collectible figures that seem to partner with every major franchise, well now they have partnered with Fortnite, which is no surprise at all. Soon you'll be able to buy Funko Pop figures with your favorite Fortnite skins on them, and I absolutely don't care about this at all personally. Well that wraps up weekly download episode number 102. Like I said, I will be doing a full studio tour here soon, but first up we have another Optiplex build to do and some really cool product reviews, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Well hope you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below to help support my channel, and as always, thank you for watching, and please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.